so in previous video you have learned about the mixtures different types of mixtures then um, heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture and then pure substances pure substances has elements compounds so these are the uh, components we can say present in the different types of matter so there where you have learned that homogeneous mixtures are there heterogeneous mixtures are there you know heterogeneous mixtures you can separate that heterogeneous mixtures easily and in uh, your previous classes you have learned that how using hand picking we can separate like or we can do sieving we can use uh, simple filtration method so all these things we do very very simple technique to separate the heterogeneous mixture and today in this video we will learn some uh, techniques where we can see how we can separate out the mixtures <laughs> Hello, Namaskar and welcome back to Gyanyatri Rupraj, a journey for learning. So today we are going to know about separating the components of mixtures. In this video, we will learn in details by different techniques how we can separate different types of mixtures. So let's start the video. First, we will start with how can we obtain colored component from blue or black ink and the method is used evaporation. So here in place of taking an example of color component from blue or black ink, we are going to take an example of salt solution. Let's see. For the experiment, taking a burner, glass rod, beaker with water, salt for mixing to the water, spatula. From spatula, salt is taken into the beaker and then glass rod is used to mix the salt with the water. This salt solution will be kept in the burner for evaporation. Due to the heat, the water will start evaporate. After some time, the water will evaporate and then only the salt will be left at the end. Hence, from here we can say that due to evaporation we have separate out the two substances. The principle which is used in the uh, evaporation method or the evaporation technique is to separate the volatile component from its non-volatile component and here the volatile component is the solvent, right? which is by getting the heat itself uh, due to the volatile composition it evaporates and because of that the non-volatile components we obtain it so non-volatile component is solute here next we are going to see how can we separate cream from milk so for separating cream from the milk the technique or the method is used centrifugation so let's see how using this technique we can separate out This is centrifuging machine where milk is putting into the bowl. The full cream milk when it put into the bowl, the centrifugation machine will start churning it. After continuous churnation, the butter milk which is the liquid part will separate out and the tensor part will remain in the bowl and this is how we can separate it. So this is this video which you are looking at is made using e partiala ar app generally the centrifugation technique is used when the solid particles size is very small and it cannot be separate out by simple filtration method so what happened based on the principle of density when it is churned or mixed in a very high speed the denser quantity contain remain down settled down and the low density content comes up 
and because of that we can separate out the uh, two contains components in present in the mixture here are the applications next we are going to know how can we separate a mixture of two immiscible liquids for that process we are using decantation Let's see with the help of an experimental procedure. Take a separating funnel and add mixture of oil and water. After adding, close it with a rubber cork. Keep the separating funnel to settle down the oil and water. So you will find it will form a layer. Now open the knob to separate out the water which is settled below. When it will settle down, you will find only the liquid that is the oil present in the separating funnel and this is how you can separate it out. In the decantation process, what happened? We use separating funnel to separate out this immiscible liquid as it is not getting mixed together. So based when we keep it to settle down it gets settled down in a layers based on their density and this is the principle from which we can able to separate out this type of mixtures these are the applications for this process A mixture of salt and ammonium chloride so the process is used sublimation as we know ammonium chloride can only convert directly from solid to gas or gas to solid so this technique has been used let's see using experimental procedure here ammonium chloride and salt mixture has been taken which is covered by funnel and closed it with a cotton plug the burner has been lighted up when it is heated up the ammonium chloride will get vaporized and after cooling it will settle down in the separating in the funnel as a solid and here's how we can separate both the component next is the dye in black ink a single colors for knowing the answer we have to see how we can use this chromatography technique to separate here pencil has been taken to draw a line in a paper in the white paper and then a pen has been taken to put a drop of ink on that line of the paper then this will be the paper has been taken and dipped into the jar which is having water now what will happen the water will run throughout the paper and due to this the ink will also run on it now take it out and dry this paper now when the paper will dry up you will find that there are inks or different colors present in the inks get separate out and it is clearly visible that how the inks got separate out and in different positions chromatography technique means uh, the chromatography word came from the chroma the chroma was a greek word and it means colors so here the technique is used to separate the color now uh, the ink or pigments this type of things has many different color two or more than two colors so the color which get solve uh, dissolve in the water it moves fastly and which not get dissolved much it moves very slowly and because of that principle only the chromatography in the chromatography technique we can separate out the different colors or components of the ink or we can separate out the pigments here are the applications so now we are going to know about how can we separate a mixture of two immiscible liquids and the process has been used here distillation using this process how 
the two miscible liquids can be separated, we will see using an experimental procedure. Let's see. Take a distillation flux which contain acetone and water with difference in boiling point. Close it with a rubber pot and put a thermometer. When you will heat it up using a burner, because of the difference in the boiling point, it will start boiling and by moving through a clamp where water, cold water will flow, it will condense and you will obtain the acetone first and later on the water you can collect directly from the distillation flask. This is how we can use this technique. In fractional distillation, there is only a difference that it has a fractionating column. Fractional distillation is generally when uh, used generally when uh, the boiling point difference is less than 25 Kelvin, right? And what is used here? Fractionating column. Fractionating column is having bits, glass bits. Glass bits helps in providing surface for the vapors so that it will cool down and condense repetitively. Hence, we can collect and separate out the two types of or more than two types of mixtures. Next, we are going to know about how can we obtain different gases from air and the method which is used is fractional distillation. So let's see how we can separate out. As we know that air having many components oxygen, argon, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. So these all are having different different and very less boiling point. When the air is passed through filter, it will go to a compressor and under compression it will compress and the hot air will pass through a chamber where due to the cold water movement it will compress and become cold. Now when the air will come to a separator, the carbon dioxide as a dry ice it will get separated out and other gases will go to expansion jet. Through the expansion jet by a pressure the other gases will flow to the fractional distillation unit where nitrogen and argon will get separate out and the remaining gas which will be oxygen will form in come to the another chamber and remain as a liquid oxygen and this is how we can separate out different different gases. going to see how can we obtain pure copper sulfate from an impure sample and the process has been used is crystallization process copper sulfate which is taking into the test tube using spatula then burner is burned now this copper sulfate will be directly heated into the burner what will happen as it will start heating up the Crystallization in this crystallization process, whatever the impure substances or the waters are there in the copper sulfate, it will start releasing out. And then this will change the color. And then we will get finally, the, with the release of water droplets, we will get finally the anhydrous copper sulfate. Now, if we see this crystallization technique is somewhat similar to the simple evaporation technique but it is better than that. Why? The reason is because it will give a pure substance whereas in the evaporation it may have some impurities also in the solution. So now we are going to see how can we obtain purified water and the methods sedimentation filtrations. Let's see with an example of experimental procedure. the waste water has been filled for the treatment this waste water goes to the sedimentation tank where 
it will allow the solids to get sediment or settle down below and then next it will go to loading tank where the suspended impurities will get sediment out and then it will go to the filtration tank where different types of gravels and sand will filter out the water and that filtered water will go to the chlorination tank where in chlorination tank chlorine will be present which will kill the bacteria and finally we will get the water from the tap this is how we get purified water so you have seen different techniques uh, for separating out the mixtures uh, if i summarize you have seen first evaporation technique and then we have uh, seen the centrifugation technique decantation using separating funnel then you have seen the chromatography where paper has been used to separate the pigments and then distillation uh, there was a fractional distillation also and how you you have seen how to separate the uh, air uh, different types of air components of air using fractional distillation and uh, finally you have seen the crystallization and then how to purify the water so that's all from this video hope you have enjoyed you have learned so that's it from this chapter also and we will see you in the next video with the next chapter next topic till then stay, th stay thinking stay learning